Right then, this is evolutionary explanations for aggression. Um, this is AQA psychology. Um, and just as a quick reminder before we get started, evolutionary psychology is the branch of psychology that looks at behaviour and the mind in its evolutionary context. What evolutionary pressures have shaped the mind um, and uh, what characteristics and behaviours have been selected um, because they um, help survival and have been passed down. Um, two things we look at as part of that natural selection, uh, which as a reminder is that the things or traits that contribute to survival are the most likely to be passed on. Sexual selection, characteristics that make you more attractive to the opposite sex and so more likely to get a partner, um, those characteristics are selected and passed on. Uh, it's advantageous to have a partner because then your genes can be passed down to the next generation. Right then, three areas to consider in relation to aggression. We're going to look at sexual competition, sexual jealousy and warfare. Okay, sexual competition. This is the idea that um, aggression can be used to gain resources or to compete for mates. So people who use aggression well um, can pass on genes to their offspring. Um, the tendency to be aggressive is then genetically transmitted. So um, this would apply potentially in... Um, if you think about birds or animals fighting for mates, um, that sort of thing. The most aggressive uh, animals or birds uh, will gain a mate and be able to pass on their genes. Okay, sexual jealousy. Um, men can't be certain that they're the father of their partner's children unless they prevent them having relationships with other men. This is a gender difference because women can be confident that the child that they're carrying is theirs. Men don't have that same confidence. So um, what they run the risk of something called cuckoldry, which is basically where they might end up investing a load of time and resources in rearing somebody else's children rather than their own. They that's not advantageous to them in an ev evolutionary sense because what they want to be doing is investing in their own children, in passing on their own genes um, rather than in somebody else's. So um, they want to avoid cuckoldry. And one thing that they can do um, is, well, sexual jealousy uh, can we think may have evolved to prevent infidelity or someone being unfaithful, a woman sleeping with someone else and then having their child. So sexual jealousy is um, kind of like a strategy to prevent that. And there are strategies used as part of that. Um, and uh, one of those is direct guarding. Um, so things like where someone is keeping tabs on their partner's behaviour, they want to know who they, where they're going, who they're with, checking their texts, that sort of thing. Um, and the, another strategy that can be used is negative inducements, so threats of really bad consequences, uh, things they'll, um, threats that they'll carry out if someone is um, unfaithful to them and sleeps with someone else. Um, and th th those can be really dire consequences. So um, sexual jealousy, there's a, a key study that we look at um, and this study actually found a link between violence and mate retention. Mate retention being trying to hang on to a partner, trying to keep the partner and um, violence they found was a strategy used within that. So there's the link is that aggression is being linked to um, when people are trying to keep a partner so that they can keep the partner and pass on their genes. So that's the link. So in this study, they surveyed people who were in co committed relationships um, and they found a positive correlation between men who use mate retention techniques. Um, if, if you think back to those strategies, you know, keeping tabs on their behaviour, on their whereabouts and so on. And the, that positively correlated with their use of violence. So that suggests basically that men use violence as a means of holding on to their partner. Um, so that's that's why it supports this explanation, this evolutionary explanation, because it, it's backing up that idea that aggression is a means um, to an end, kind of a passing on, on genes. Um, yes, there we go. So um, the last thing that we look at here is warfare. Um, and if you think about um, a species like uh, men fighting with another group of men actually on the surface of it it doesn't seem like that's very 
have a real evolutionary benefit because they might be killed, obviously, I'm not going to pass on their genes in that case. But it does have various evolutionary advantages as well um, that we look at. And actually, if you think about someone who's been shown a lot of aggressiveness and um, bravery in war, they, after they return successfully from war, um, they would have uh, more resources, so they might have taken over new territory. Um, they'll have m massively high status um, among the people that they return to, which means that they're much more likely to, to gain a partner or gain a mate. Um, they're, those kinds of displays of aggressiveness and bravery are attractive to females, those people are admired. Um, there's also group benefits in terms of the people that they fought with will give them status, um, those who survive the most battles will have the most status and so on. And so that also brings benefits because in a group if you've got a strong group dynamic you're more likely to succeed in war, more likely to survive if you work together as a group. So there are, although it's seems like it's a bit uh, counterintuitive. There are advantages to something like this. Um, and there was a study carried out by someone called Chagnon, where in more traditional societies, um, they found that warriors have more partners and children. So that supports this whole idea, because more partners and more children means more likelihood of their genes being passed down. Um, so that was the end of the description of evolutionary um, the evolutionary explanation of aggression.